glad now. Show sure enough, the Lord is blessing me, blessing you, blessing us, blessing all of them right now, right now, right now. Yes, Lord, he woke us up this morning and he surely started us on our way. The Lord is truly blessing us right now, right now, right now. Well, I am going to um, go out and see who's with us tonight in Bible study. And, of course, my sister fan to help me tonight, if she would help me tonight and tell me who's watching tonight in Bible study. Don't you do that, sister fan? All right. <clears throat> if she's doing that, I'm going to do this. All right. Of course, we got up. Sister Carol is on. Yes, yes, yes. And Sister Rhonda. Mm-hmm. And Sister Rochelle. All right, who's making comments? About 10 people are on that. They're not making comments, but they're on. And, uh, Sister Brenda Wright is Brenda on. Brenda Wright, mm-hmm. And Mother Moses, I see she just jumped down. All right. Okay. All right. Come on, All right. Well, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. God is in the temple, and we're going to give him praise tonight, and we're going to have an exciting Bible study tonight. Uh, I certainly hope that you would do as I've asked you to do, uh, is to share our Bible study with your family and friend. You can do it on YouTube. You can share it on Facebook. You can share it any way you want to share it. Uh, just click the link, copy the link, and send it to them on your Facebook page or your YouTube page. Or you can send it as a text to them as I send it, at least I, just as I send it out to you. Well, good evening, Sister Fan. Good evening. Good, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. I said good evening about 12 o'clock today, and somebody said that ain't evening, it's afternoon. I said, well, evening, afternoon is about the same to me. <laughs> it's hot, hot, hot out there. Boy, it's hot. Woo! Jesus. No, you know you don't want to go to hell. I sure don't want to go because it's too hot down here. Let's have a word of prayer uh, and call on the name of him who lived, died, resurrected, and coming back again. Let's go through the throne of grace. Dear God, we come tonight thanking you for another opportunity to call upon your name. Thank you for waking us this morning on due time to see another day that we've never seen before. With all of our aches, with all of our pains, with all of the problems and the cares of this world. Thank you, Lord, for just waking us up, opening our eyes that we might see. Thank you, Lord, giving us the breath of life, our ears that we may hear, our tongue that we might talk, our legs that we may walk. Thank you, God, for the very breath that we breathe. Lord, we say to you tonight, you know our heart and you know our heart's desire. You know the thing that we're going through, you know the trouble of this land, and God, only you can heal this land, only you, God, only you, the wicked shall cease from troubling, and the weary one day will be at rest, and all the saints of God, the true saints of God, will sit at his feet and be we know not when the day shall come, but we know that day is to come. Prepare us for that day. Then when you shall call us from labor to rest. Be with those who have lost loved one. Let them know that earth has no sorrow, that heaven cannot heal. Be with those who have family members who are hospitalized or family members who are sick. Even if they're sick themselves, 
bring forth healing as you can in the name of Jesus. God, that surgeon's hand and God is mine. God, the doctors, God, that they prescribe medicines in the name of Jesus. We pray for all of those that are in the medical field in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We give thanks to you. Bless ministers and ministries everywhere. Give us the strength that we need. Be with my pastor, Pastor DeWitt Smith. Continue to heal him, God. Touch his body as only you can. In the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, when this journey is over and our work is complete, meet us in a dying hour and speak to our soul. Let us hear those welcome words, well done, well done, thy good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things, and I shall make you ruler over many. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Well, God bless you. We're going to ask you as always, if you would make a liberal donation to the church, help us out in the ministry. It doesn't matter what you're seeing, but send something to help keep the doors of the church open. For the doors of the church need to be open in a time like this. You know, it's in a time like this, we need the Lord to help us. We can't make it without Him. Now, if you would, send a liberal donation to the church at libertyintministry.com. Click the PayPal link. If you read the, uh, the chat there, uh, our good friend and member, Carol, I had put the instruction as to what to do, uh, but I'm going to share it with you also. You can go out to Zelle, Z-E-L-L-E, -L -L -E, and put in the number 404-308-0795, 404-308-0795, or you can go out to and mail it directly to the church at 1362 Metropolitan Parkway in the lovely city of Atlanta, Georgia, 30310. Or you can bring it by the church Monday through Friday, Monday through Thursday. The hours are from 9 to 3 and Friday from 9 unto 12. And may God continue to bless you and may heaven smile upon you. Also, you can share our services and our Bible study just by going out to our website at libertyintministry.com. Won't you do that? Thank you so very, very much. We're going to get ready to get into the Word tonight. But as always, we're going to be in Romans chapter 4. We're sitting here at the kitchen table, Sister Fan and I, uh, and bringing the word forth. And I want to just say, um, as we do it each and every week, we like to go back and just talk about what we talked about in Romans, you know, and, and bring us up to where we are now. And in chapter 1, we talked about what Paul, the Apostle Paul, was talking about. He, would, he had longed to come to Rome uh, and visit the saints in Rome, and, and he was talking about the sins of, of the people, the Jews and both the Gentiles. And what he said to them, this is what he said to uh, the Jews. Jews, you, you, you're fighting the Gentiles, calling them sinners and what have you. He said, but you're sinners. And then in chapter 2, he talks about the Gentiles, and he tells the Gentiles, and well, he says to the Jews, there's many of the Gentiles more, more true to God than you are. And then he says to the Gentiles, you are, you're a sinner too. And then in chapter 3, he talks about, of all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And he talks about the justification of those of us who are believers, those of us who are believers. He talks, he said, both the Gentiles and both the Jews, not based on circumcision, but based on that faith or their belief in Jesus Christ. That's how we're saved, because of our faith and our belief in Jesus Christ, because Jesus Christ justified us by his death. He redeemed us by dying for our sin. See, we were, we were separated from God by our sin, but because of Jesus' death, he redeemed us back to Christ, back to God, rather, back to God, right? A sin has separated us from God, but Jesus came and paid for our, our sin debt. Okay, now, we're going to be in the night. We're going to be talking about um, Abraham. He's going to be talking about Abraham, the father of faith, and his justification through faith. His justification through faith. I said, Jesus justified, Jesus justified our sins by dying. But Jesus wasn't alive when Abraham was here. 
Abraham was considered the father of faith. Now, let me, let me just do a little backdrop on this. In Romans, Paul's going to talk about four different Old Testament characters throughout the book of Rome. He's going to talk about Adam. He's going to talk about Abraham. He's going to talk about David. And he's going to talk about Moses. Now, tonight, he's going to talk in about Abraham and David. Let's talk a little bit about Abraham before we get into Scripture so they will understand who Abraham was. Abraham was considered the father of faith because Abraham believed and in God. Not Jesus, but he believed in God. God told Abraham to leave his father's country and go to a land that he would know not where it would be, but he followed the instructions of God because he believed in God. He believed in God, so he followed the instructions of God, and he went off and his, his father's country took his nephew Lot, his wife Sarah, uh, and they went to a country called um, the Chaldean country. He left Ur and went to the Chaldean country, and there he dwelled. Well, while there, he, his nephew Lot ended up in a place called Sodom. And you may have heard of Sodom and Gomorrah. He ended up in a place called Sodom. And, and while he was in Sodom, he was taken captive. His nephew was taken captive by another nation. About five nations came together and overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. And they took Abraham, uh, Abraham's nephew Lot captivity. But when Abraham found out about it and heard about it, he took his men or the people, and then he partnered with somebody else, and he went and he took and, and captured them and brought his nephew Lot back. Well, the king of Sodom asked Abraham, uh, said, well, Abraham, since you did this, I want to just share the bounty and everything with you. Abraham said, no, no, no. God didn't tell me to take anything. He, you give it to the men who went with me and helped fault. But I don't want anything because I'm going to be obedient to God. I got what I need. I got my nephew Lot. Okay, so then as if you look in chapters uh, 14, he talks about God, how God has said to uh, Genesis 14. When you go to Genesis 14, this is where you find the whole story about Abraham in the book of Genesis. And so he says to Abraham, uh, then because just, Abraham, you've justified by your faith in me. So because of your faith in me, your belief in me, I'm going to make you the father of many nations. Now, take, listen to what I'm saying, but many nations. Well, those nations included, guess what? The Gentiles. Those nations included black folks, white folks, all people. He said, I'm going to make you the father of all nations because of your faith. So you're justified by your faith. But God justified Abraham, but Jesus justifies us by his death and dying on the cross. And Paul is going to talk a little bit more about that uh, in this in this chapter. So Sister Fanny is going to take it now, and she's going to start reading at verses 1 through 5. All right? Read, Sister Fanny. Romans 4, verse 1. What then shall we say that Abraham our father is discovered in this matter? If, in fact, Abraham was justified by works, he had something to boast about, but not before God. What does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. Now, when a man works, his wages are not credited to him as a gift, but as an obligation. However, to the man who does not work, but trusts God, who justifies the wicked, his faith is credited as righteousness. Well, he's saying now, hey, listen, it ain't about your work, just about your faith in God. It's about your faith in God, your belief, Abraham's faith in God. But Jesus, he's telling us now, but our faith should be in who? Jesus. We have to have confidence in Jesus. Who we have to trust in is in Jesus. Why do I say that? Because Jesus is the one who God sent into the world to be our advocate to be the one who would stand in the gap for our sins. You sin, I sin, we all sin, but who's standing in the gap for our sin? Jesus does. So Jesus died to bring to justify our sins and to redeem us back to God because we were separated from God. Sin separates us from God. We can't when we pray, we have to pray in the name of Jesus. We can't pray to God. Abraham prayer was to God. But 
our prayer is to who? Jesus, the one who died for our sin. When we pray, we pray. I know that Jesus says this when we pray, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it will in heaven. Okay. Jesus teaches us how to pray, but we have to ask for a thing in the name of Jesus. What do you say, Bishop? Because he said, anything you ask for in my name, that that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in who? The Son. So we're praying to Jesus. We're talking to calling on Jesus to talk to the Father that God may hear and answer our prayer because we were separated from God because of our sin. We're still separated from God because of our sin, but because of Jesus who died for our sin, he brings us back in right relationship with God. Right? All right. All right. If you, I hope you got that. If you didn't get that, let me see who got that. Let me see who got it. Let me see who got it. All right. Let's see. Uh, brother says, uh, good evening, church family. Mother Moses, good evening, church family. When, uh, Val is that says, good evening, church. Uh, so the, uh, Thor says, hello, church family. Beverly says, hello. Uh, Sister Cato said, hello, everyone. Erica said, hello, everybody. Uh, and then Wanda said, hello, everybody. Sister Hill said, amen. Uh, London said, uh, good evening, family. Tony Floyd says, I'm here. And uh, Daryl says, good evening, church family. And keep uh, family praying of all in is blessed. Praying everyone is blessed. All right. Now, I, I get to keep saying this because Abraham was a father of faith. Faith is confidence. He had confidence and trust in God. So if Jesus died for our sin, then we have to have faith in who? Jesus. One, that he died for our sin. What I said, Romans going to say later on, later on in the chapter, said, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart the Lord Jesus, then you are what? Saved. So you have to have what? Faith or belief and trust in Jesus. Well, I'm going to go back to some else on Abraham, and then we're going to move forward uh, to verse 6 to 10. Abraham was told at the age of 99 by God that he was going to have a son or have a child. And Abraham, at 99 years old, his wife Sarah uh, was uh, was old and stricken in years, and she was in her 80s or so, so she couldn't, you know, there was no way naturally that that was going to happen. But Abraham's faith and belief in God, he believed God. Sarah laughed at it when she heard it, but Abraham believed in God. And as God said what was going to happen, it happened. See, God doesn't work on our time schedule. You know, a lot of some ladies, a lot of ladies say, I'm getting old, my biological click is ticking, and I can't conceive, and I'm getting too old. But God doesn't work on your time schedule. He works on his time schedule. Well, you know, it's time for me to get a promotion on my job. It's time for me to do this. It's time for me to do that. God does not work on your time schedule. If God said it's going to happen, you just have to trust him and believe. As Isaiah said, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagle, run and not get weary, walk and not faint. We have to trust Jesus, believe in him because Jesus is our advocate. Pray to him, ask in his name, and wait on him to give us the answer. Now, you can't refuse the answer when the answer comes. You can't say, well, I don't want that answer. Well, you got to accept the answer that he gives you because it's going to make your life a whole lot what better. All right, so this van is going to read now in verses 4, uh, chapter 4, verses 6 through 10. Read, sweet. Verse 6. David says the same thing when he speaks of the blessedness of the man to whom God credits righteousness apart from works. Blessed are they whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man whose sin the Lord will never count against him. Is this blessedness only for the circumcised or also for the uncircumcised? We have been saying that Abraham's faith was credited to him as righteousness. Under what circumstances was it credited? Was it after he was circumcised or before? It was not after, 
but before. All right, now thank you, hon. I want and I I wanted to wait till we get to this point, but I want to talk about that because David. Now I told you this was going to be Abraham and David. David, who we all know, sin and he sinned against God, but and the act of adultery that he committed and things that he had done to get um, his the latest wife. Uh, um, the husband killed, right? We know that. We know the story, right? So now, David, who was a sinner, is saying that because of his faith or in his belief and conviction in God, that God covers all sin. That God, and Jesus wasn't on the sin, seen then. He said, and God covers all sin, and God blot out sin. God blots out sin when God forgives you because of your faith in him. You put your faith and trust in everything else, but you need to have confidence that what God said he'll do, he will do. Mm -hmm. You have to have confidence in what God said that he will do, he will do. Now, let's go on and move on to where Abraham is now. Because he's saying, okay, is it the blessing for the circumcised or is it for the uncircumcised? Well, that's a question that was asked him. And then it, this is the main question, key question, Val. This was the key question he asked. He said, was Abraham circumcised at the time when God claimed him to be righteous? Well, I want you to know, if you read Genesis, uh, the 16th chapter, you'll see that when God called him righteous because of his faithfulness, it was in the 15th chapter and told him he was going to have a child, a male child. But in chapter 16, after that, then he circumcised. He took command of him or made a covenant with him that he must be circumcised and his sons or children and everyone that's under his rule or, uh, should be circumcised. Whether he bought them, whatever, whatever kin folks, whatever, they had to be circumcised. So he was justified prior to circumcision. So circumcision did not get him circumcised, I mean, uh, get, bring him to be righteous in the sight of God. It was because of his heart. Circumcision doesn't mean a physical circumcision. It's, it's what your heart is, what you believe, what your faith is, what you're trusting, what your confidence in. See, some people say, well, I ain't never been circumcised, never been circumcised, circumcised. Well, you know, ladies don't get circumcised. So, so I mean, so what happens to them then if they don't get circumcised? Hmm? It ain't about circumcision of the physical circumcision. It's a circumcision of the heart, the cleanliness of the heart, and the heart and having faith and belief in Jesus. He had faith and belief in God, again, because Jesus was not on the scene. But he is now on the scene, and we must have faith and confidence in Jesus. Say it one more time. We must have faith and confidence in Jesus. Because there are many things I would say that we have confidence in. We just came back flying on a plane. We had confidence and got on that plane with no apprehension or what have you. We had confidence that we were going to get to our destination and then we came back, we had confidence that we were gonna get back to our destination and the pilot and the stewardess and everybody was gonna be all right and everything gonna be all right. The people in the truck that was on the plane wasn't gonna act up, everything was gonna work out for the good, right? So we, we didn't even give it a second thought. We just got on, boarded, left, came back, boarded, came home. Cause we had confidence that everything was gonna be all right. And that's what we are about a lot of things. We have confidence about a lot of things that it's going to be all right because we trust it, right? But our real confidence is in Jesus Christ because we should have confidence that he's going to make sure that everything work out for what? Our good. Because all things work out for the good of them who love the Lord and that are called according to who his purpose, right? All right, so we're going to go, we're going to move on. So the fan is going to read now. She's going to read... Let me get to it for you, huh? She's going to read uh, 11 through 15. Verse 11. And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness that he had by faith while he was still uncircumcised. Something she she holds something there. See, Paul is saying, why he, the question was whether or not was he circumcised. I just told you he was not. Paul is now saying to those 
readers that's reading the book of uh, the letter that he wrote to the Romans, he's saying to them, listen, Jews, and listen, Gentiles. Circumcision does not put you in right relationship with God. Not the physical circumcision, but again, it is your heart and your belief and your faith in God. Abraham was not only had faith in God. Faith is a noun, meaning that's a thing. Now the person plays a thing. That's a thing. Having faith is a thing, right? And being faithful to God, being faithful, that means that you are loyal to God, right? So faithful is an adjective. Faith is the noun, right? So he was not only what he had faith in him, but he was faithful to him because he was obedient to him. All right? All right, read. Verse 12. And he is also the father of the circumcised, who not only are circumcised, but who also walk in the footsteps of the faith that our father Abraham had before he was circumcised. Stop right there. Read that back again. Read it back again. I want them to get this. Read it back again. Read it. And he is also the father of the circumcised, who not only are circumcised, but who also walk in the footsteps of the faith that our father Abraham had before he was circumcised. Walking in the faith that Abraham had. Read on. Read. It was not through law that Abraham and his offspring received the promise that he would be heir of the world. You got to understand, it was not because of the law, because the Ten Commandments were not... And written because the Ten Commandments didn't come into play to Moses and the exorcism. And Moses wasn't on the scene at this time, right? So it was not by the law, but it was by, by faith, his faithfulness, his belief in God. Okay? All right, read on. But through the righteousness that comes by faith. For it is those who live by law are heirs. Faith has no value and the promise is worthless. Because law brings wrath, and where there is no law, there is no transgression. Where there is no law, there is no transgression, meaning that you haven't transgressed against the law, you haven't broken the law, because there is no law. There is no law. Um, let me just, I want to do a sidebar here. The FDA is moving to... And let me just say the premise of this is I don't, I'm not a smoker and I'm not advocating smoking. But the FDA is trying to criminalize people who smoke marijuana cigarettes. They're trying to make that a law. That you know, the young people who smoking, they have to be 21, of course, smoking menthol cigarettes. And most 85% of black people smoke menthol cigarettes. And they are trying to criminalize people who do that just like they did the day with marijuana. Now they're making marijuana legal. Flavored cigarettes, uh, kids going to the service station to buy those flavored cigarettes. We all know that they're gonna do it. And uh, just like they did buying marijuana <laughs> when it wasn't legal. Uh, and they wanna criminalize it and make it a federal law. So then you become a convicted felon if you caught with menthol cigarettes. It's not the law yet, but that's the law that they're proposing to to have and the people who are going to be subject to that is black folks, black and brown people, because 85% of smokers who smoke menthol and those flavored cigarettes are black and brown people. Now, but the law, if if there's going to be a law, it should be a law that every all smoking should be against the law. But they ain't gonna do that uh, because it's this to only deal with one set. Of people now, this is the reason I'm saying that is the 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 Jews wanted to hold the the Gentiles by the same law that they were subject to because they were under the law. Now, this is way after Moses, you know, they they under the law. Uh, so now they wanted to hold the Jews, I mean, the Gentiles, to the same law that they were subject to. But the, what the author, what the author is saying here, what Paul is saying is, they can't break a law that they didn't know wasn't a part of. That law wasn't given to them; it was given to the Jews. So they can't have broken any law. <laughs> Only those who it was given to. So that's why I'm making this point. So if you're a smoker, 
and you know, he's not smoking menthol, if the law becomes, okay, you good. But if you are smoking menthol and, and it's the law, then you have committed a federal offense. I hope you see the comparison of what I'm saying. All right. You get that? All right. All right. Come on. Read. 16. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Go on. Therefore, the promise comes by faith, so that it may be by grace and may be guaranteed to all Abraham's offspring, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham. All right, let's, let's, let's stop right here. Stop right here, David Cooper. Stop right here. Abraham, God told Abraham he would be the father of many nations. So everyone that came up under the lineage of David, I mean, or Abraham, brother, then they are David's, I mean, Abraham's offspring, which David is an Abraham offspring. So now, here we are, and he's saying that whether they're justified by, I mean, uh, they have been circumcised or not, their faith, their belief in Jesus, because remember, Jesus is an offspring of Abraham. Because he's from the lineage of David, who is from the lineage of Abraham, right? So he's saying in the scriptures here, and he's he, he's battling these these Jews who are trying to make it be what they want it to be. Because you know there are people who always want to make it their way and the way they want it to be, and count black folks out or brown folks out, like I was saying about cigarettes. Okay, so but here he is. He said, but no, 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 no. Let's 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 be clear here. It's by the faith of Abraham. If you have the faith of Abraham, if you have the faith of Abraham, and if you believe in Jesus Christ, then now today, you are no different than anybody else if you believe in Jesus Christ because we all are in the same family because Jesus is died for all of our sin. So there's no separation in Jesus Christ. Either you believe in him or you don't believe in him. If you have confidence in his dying, resurrection, and coming back again, or you don't have confidence, you can't separate. <coughs> <Yeah>. They talk about <coughs> the most excuse me, the most segregated time in America is doing church time because you got the blacks over here, whites over here, the Asians over here. You got the AME over here. You got the CME over here. You got the you know Protestants over here. The Catholics over here. Separate, but we all say. Not all of us, because many of us, some faith don't believe in Jesus. But those of us believe in Jesus, we separate ourselves. We separate ourselves. Why? But we say we all say we believe yep. in Jesus. We believe He lived. We believe He died. We believe He resurrected, and we believe He's Lord over our life. He's our Savior. He saved us. He He redeemed us. He redeemed us back to God, and God is the God of all, right? So he redeemed us back to God and by the justi justifying us by dying for our sin, paying our sin debt. He paid our sin debt. All right. So that's what he's saying here. If Abraham is the father of all, then what is the separation part about? What What is the circumcision about? Because is that really significant whether you're circumcised or not circumcised? Is it, is it significant? You go to this church, you go to that church, you in this nomination or that nomination. What, what's, what's the separation about? There's, there's no separation in, in Christ Jesus. Either you believe in him, either you have faith in him. Now, we may worship him different. You know, you got some, some churches, they don't shout. Some churches, they shout. You know what I mean? Some people, um, you know, do various things, different things in churches because you know, people like different things or what have you. But the reality of it is, is do we all still have full confidence? Listen to what I said now. I said full, F-U-L-L. Do we have full confidence in Jesus Christ as being our Lord and Savior, Jesus, the Lord and Savior, that he really died for our sins and that he really got our best interest? Do we have full confidence in that? Full confidence. I didn't just say confidence. I mean full confidence. 
You know, you you can have a full tank of gas, you can have a half a tank of gas, you can have a third tank of gas, and you can be empty. <laughs> but do you have full confidence in Jesus Christ? And some of us are like that. Some, you know, we leave church, we full, we go back, we we happy, full, we got full confidence. By the time we hit that door, then we're going to half a tank. <laughs> then we're going to third of a tank, and by the end of the week, we on empty, brother Dad. We on empty. We on empty. We on empty. But do you have full confidence in Jesus Christ? I hope you're sharing this with others, and I hope you're clicking in and listening and showing them. So there's some people right now that that's caught up in this doubt element and doubting what what tomorrow gonna bring, doubting how they gonna make it, doubting all these things because they seeing these things with their natural eye and they saying, "Oh man, this is this and this is this. I don't know how I'm gonna make it. I don't know how I'm gonna pay my rent. I don't know how to pay my car note. I don't know how I'm gonna feed my kid. I don't know how I'm gonna do any of these things." Well, if you have faith in Jesus and you believe in him, you know that all things are possible because of him. And he will, he will make a way. He's going to send somebody to do it like God sent a raven to feed Elijah uh, and send Elijah to the little woman's house that she could feed her son and him and her meal barrel would continue to run over. But, but we read these things, but do we really believe these things? Do we really have that full confidence in Jesus? Do we really have that full confidence that uh, that Abraham have? Do we have that full confidence and that assurance? Well, uh, are you saying, uh, I think I am, I might be, uh, that ain't nobody with full confidence, that's somebody got doubt. I mean, because you listen to what somebody said, you ain't saved because you do this, you ain't saved because you do that. Well, I'm a sinner, thank God, saved by grace. That's what he said up there a few minutes ago, then he said in verse 16, for this reason, it is of faith, so that it may be through grace, grace, and so that the word of, word of God may be uh, certain to all the seeds. Not some of them, he said all the seeds. Not only to that which is of the law, but that which is of the faith of who? Abraham, who is the father of all of us. Grace, grace, grace. It's the grace, all right? All right, uh, so man is going Read and uh, we're gonna wrap this up. We're gonna wrap this up. Start at 17. Yeah, we're gonna start at 17. We're gonna get ready to wrap this up. Uh, it's right there. Okay, read 17. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations, he is our father in the sight of God, in whom he believed. The God who gives life to the dead and cause things that are not as though they were. Against all hope, Abraham in hope believed and so became the father of many nations, just as it had been said to him, so shall your offsprings be. Without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead since he was about a hundred years old and that Sarah's womb was also dead. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God. You no, know, I preached, I've been preaching on God's promise, and then I may preach on how you receive it. And I said, by you have to be what? Faithful, and you have to have what? Faith. You got to have faith. You got to be faithful. You got to be loyal. You got to have faith. In God, you got to trust and believe. You no, know, if God said it, you no, know, you see how they think God said it, that sells it. You know, we we put these bomb stick on our car, then, then when things come up, we do that. Like, oh, you know, and moaning and crying and groaning and what have you. But if God said it, it is going to come to pass. Abraham held true to his faith in God, uh, and and because that. As God told him, you're going to be the father of many nations, many, 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 many nations. Not just one nation, but many, many nations. And then he said, and this, is the, this is the part where I, where I like. Uh, when you read back that part where he said that when those things that you, you know, don't see, that you, that, that, that it will come to pass. Uh, I'm trying to go back to that verse. Uh, I think it's verse 18. It said, who, yes. yeah, we read. read. I think Who without reason for hope and faith went on hoping, and so that he became the father of a number of nations, as it had been said, 
so will your seed be. Now I want to deal with that part where he said, as it is said uh, in the Holy Writ, I have made you a father of many, of many nations before him in whom he had faith. That is God who gives life to the dead and whom the things which are not are as if they were. And you know, we say, speak those things as though they were, even though they are not. Speak it into existence. You know, I've heard that name it, claim it. It's yours for the ash. They just name it. Name it. That's that prosperity ministry. Name it. Claim it. It's yours for the ash. Just name it. Claim it. You know, we say, if you believe, you shall receive. If you doubt, you got to what? Do it out. Belief in Jesus Christ. You got to believe it. You got to believe it. You got to trust. You got to have confidence that it's going to work out. Abraham, even though he was old, even though God had told him that he was going to have a child, he was old, but he had confidence and belief in God that it was going to happen. His wife, on the other hand, had had other had other things. She didn't really believe it. She thought she was too old. But Abraham held on to his what? Faith. He held on to his what? Faith. Now, some people say, well, you know, why did he have a child by um uh, the Egyptian woman uh, that Sarah gave him to, uh, to to be with. Why did he do that? Well, he did, and he did it because his wife said, I want to have a child, and that's where she thought that it would be, and she had a surrogate who was her servant girl, and she brought him to him to bear a child. But his hope and his belief was always that he was going to have a child by Sarah, and they did have that child, and his name was Isaac. All right. Read verse, the last verse. Still, he did not give up faith in the undertaking of God, but was made strong by faith, giving glory to God. Giving it all to God. See, that's what we got to do. We got to get the glory to God. We got to stop taking credit for ourselves because we done got a few victories. We done been a little successful. And we start wanting to take credit for ourselves. We start doing this right here, beating our chest. Oh, look at what I've done. Look at who I am. Look at what I have become. Look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. No, look at him. Lift your eyes unto the hills from which come your help, knowing all your help come from him. Because you ain't got no help. You frail in, the, in this body. This body is frail. You may be sick tomorrow. You may be sick tonight. You can't control sickness. You can't control death. You can't control any of that. Only somebody can control all things is him. So we got to just what? Trust in him and have confidence in who? In him. In him. Like Abraham. This is what it's all about. He used Abraham as a comparison. Stop this nonsense about circumcised, uncircumcised, Jews, Gentile. Stop this argument by I'm saved and you ain't saved. I go to church and you don't go to church. I know Jesus and you don't know Jesus. It, it, well, in, in chapters um, 2, he talked about that. He said to the Jews, he said, some of the Jew, Gentiles, they got more faith than you got. <laughs> And you are, you understand the law, and they ain't even under the law. Well, you got some people who ain't even been in the church, who don't even know uh, uh, the word of God, barely know a scripture. They got more faith than those of you who carry, got scriptures everywhere, can quote scripture back and forth. But you don't you don't believe, you don't trust Him when the battle is coming, when you're waging a war, when struggle is coming. You just like Peter when the wind came and you don't ask Jesus to help you, you know, to get on. Walk on the water, and Jesus told you to come on out here. And you went out there, and then when the waves come and the wind started blowing, then you start looking down and took your eyes off Jesus because you got to keep your focus on who He is and who He is and who you are and who you belong to. You do not belong to yourself. You were bought with a price, and that price was the price that Jesus paid when He died on the cross and paid our sin debt. When He justified us, and then He redeemed us back to God and made us back. And right relationship with God. That's what we need to stay. That's what we need to stay focused on. It, uh, the right relationship with God. As long as we stay and keep our faith in Jesus, we'll stay in right relationship with God. Because God will be the final judge and the final jury in terms of whether or not we were faithful or not. He is going to be the one, not any man. All right, read 21 through 25. Being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. This is why it was credited to him as righteousness. The words it was credited to him were written not for him alone, but also for us, to whom God, 
will be credit righteousness for us who believe in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. He was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. There it is. There it is. Oops, there it is. That's, uh, what more can be said other than we come to church to know more about him. We come to Bible study to know more about him, to stay in right relationship with him. And the only way you can stay in right relationship with God is through by Jesus Christ. And that's by believing in him, believing he lived, died, resurrected, and he's coming back again. And that he died, he died for our sins. And that God sent him into the world because man could not live by the law. Law was too hard for man to live by. Mm -hmm. It was we were in the flesh, and God realized that. And so God said, I, I got to send my son into the world to die for this and to be uh, between me and sin and them. So Jesus came to shed his innocent blood, innocent blood, because he was not a sinner. He had not, no sin. But he came and shed his innocent blood for our sin. He took humiliation. He took abuse. He took all of that for us, for us, for us. He did that. And he rose from the grave to prove that he had the power over sin and death. God raised him to prove to a sin-sick world that he had the power over sin and death. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he did that for us. So when you say, do you believe in Jesus? Do you believe Jesus lived, died, resurrected, and come again? You know, when people join the church, I mean, get baptized, whether you join the church or not, whatever church you go to, that's, that's, that's your choice. But do you really believe that Jesus lived, died, resurrected, and coming back again? Do you really believe and have faith in him that he'll work all things out? There's a scripture that says, it said, weeping may endure for a night. Didn't say you weren't going to cry. He said, well, weeping may do for a night, but joy going to come in the morning. Amen. And Ecclesiastes says the time and the season for all things. That's what Solomon said. He realized that. But he realized that God was in control at the end because Solomon thought that he had it going on. But then he finally realized it wasn't me. It was God. God gave me the wisdom. God gave me the understanding. God gave it to me. It was God. And that's what we need to realize. We're nothing without God. Mm -hmm. We're nothing without God. We're, we're puppets on a string being used. Now, it's just whether or not you want to serve him, you want to serve Satan, you want to keep going to the left, Losing your faith and eyes off, taking your eyes off Jesus and taking your and putting your eyes on the things of the world and the people of the world and trying to compete with the people of this world. We can't compete with the people of this world because we brought nothing in this world and we're not taking any away. Nothing. But our soul, God is coming back to reclaim the soul. That's what he comes for. That's what he gave us was a soul. Breathed in the man's nostril and man became a what? Living soul. If we believe the word of God, then we understand what the word of God is saying to us. What he's saying to us, put your trust in Jesus. Put your confidence in Jesus. His life, his death, and his resurrection. Because God has promised us those things and many things. I gave you nine of them, but there are many things God promised but the only way that he can fulfill those promises to us like he did to Abraham is we must have the faith in Jesus. I didn't say in God. I said in Jesus. Abraham had to have the faith in God, but we have to have the faith in Jesus because he died for our sins. I hope tonight that you have enjoyed this lesson and you got something from it and that it will be a blessing to you because as you're going through life and life journey and things are going to come your way, Things gonna come your way. I would not sit here tonight and tell you, yeah, because you believe in Jesus, you got faith in Jesus. Things are not gonna come your way, but things are gonna come your way. It they gonna come your way to try your faith, to see how faithful you are and whether or not you have faith. Whether or not, where's your faith? Where's your faith? Where's your faith? You know, Jane Cleveland song that song about the man. You know, that was sitting there crying. He said, well, where's your faith in God? Well, I had a lot of money. I had this and I had that, but I lost all of that. He said, where's your faith in God? Where's your faith? Where's your faith? 
Where's your faith? Job was clearly a prime example. His faith was in God. Hebrew boys, as a being man used to say, Brother King said, yeah, it were three Hebrew boys. Both their faith in God. Testing time, but he, they never lost their faith in God. Testing time, we never should lose our faith in Jesus because he got us. We just have to trust him, have confidence in him, and know that it, whatever comes our way, it's going to be all right because we're going to give it to Jesus. Well, he said, one of the prophets, God said, lay your burdens on him because his yoke is easy and his burdens are light. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Do you have confidence in that? Do you understand what he's saying when he said that? Take it to him and just leave it right there. Well, thank you so much again for joining us tonight. Uh, Sister Floyd, I'm going to read some of the comments before we close out. Sister Floyd, she says, Trials and tribulations, yes, they will come. Uh, Wanda said, you're so right. We are nothing without God. That's 100%. We're nothing without him. Uh, Sister McKinney said, I, I, I uh, have faith, have the faith, amen, amen. And Sister Cato says, yes, he will make a way. Uh, let's see. I see a lot of amens, amen. I'm trying to read some comments here. Uh, okay, those are the comments that I've seen. All right. Well, thank you so much, and thank you for your amen and amen. Uh, and ain't nothing too hard for God. Nothing. Nothing too hard for God. If he made the heavens and the earth, and he sent his son in the world to die for our sin, he's in total control. Not the White House, not the Democratic Party, the Republican Party, not any politician, not any wealthy so-called rich man, because he said it would be harder for a rich man to make it through the eye of the needle of a camel than it is to make it into the kingdom of God. So don't worry about that. Don't be weary and we'll do it. Just keep trusting in, in him. Well, if you would, don't forget to make a little donation to help us out at the church. Won't you do that? There's, just send it to uh, Sister Carol has it right there. You can see what she has. She put it on every week. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Subscribe and share. Subscribe and share. Subscribe and share. And I know there are many, many people that are on. Subscribe and share. Now, I know I, I look at our Bible study every week, uh, late on in the week, and I'll see more people on that were, that was on tonight because I know that you're sharing it. But I ask you to continue to share because we need the, the word to go out. More people need to hear the word. More people need to have that faith because we live and we got people dealing with so many things and they're trying to handle it themselves. But the Lord will make a way. As my brother-in-law, Otis uh, Snell, used to say, the Lord will make a way somehow. But if you would, if you would just help us out, Make a donation through libertyintministry.com. Click the PayPal link on uh, there. And, of course, again, you can go out to the website and look at the Bible study and worship service. And you can always go back to our YouTube channel and watch any of our Bible studies or any of our services. Or you can go out to Cash App. Not Cash App. Cash App, but we don't have Cash App no more. But you can go out to Zelle, put in the number... Uh, 404 or you can met it directly to the church at 1362 Metropolitan Parkway in the lovely city of Atlanta, Georgia, 30310. Uh, you can bring it by. The office hours are from 9 to 3, Monday through Thursday, and 9 to 12 on Friday. Our prayers will continue for you. May God continue to bless you and yours. And as always, and as always, we wish you always that you would remember that you are the head and not the tail. You're above and not beneath. You're a lenders and not borrowing. You're victorious and the devil is defeated. And don't you dare forget the message of love. Oh, Lord. Lord, you've been, you've been good to me. I was sitting over there thinking, looking over my life, and Lord, you've been, you've been.
been good to me, yes. When I was down and out, yeah. Didn't have a dime. You made a way for me, Jesus. <laughs> and you did it so many times. Lord, you brought me, oh, oh, oh from a mighty, a mighty long way. for me. Yes, Lord. You've been a father for me. You've been a sister. Lord, you've been a brother too. And you, you didn't leave me. You stayed by 